Hello, and welcome to another episode of Starside Chats. I'm one of your hosts, Zach Owens, and joining me as always is Aaron Capo. Hello. And uh, we've got a lot of games out now. It's it's definitely fall game season. We're getting to the end of October. A bunch of stuff came out, so we're going to talk about all of that. We also have some interesting news. There's also been some like previews of games. Uh, I don't know if we want to get into uh, those too much, but we can maybe talk about them a little bit. Yeah, weirdly, there were two showcases of horror games this week. Uh, yeah. That just came out of nowhere, I feel like. Yeah, I wasn't expecting them. But also, like, previews of, like, God of War and the new yeah. Pokemon game. And just, like, there's been kind of a lot of things happening lately in the uh, video game industry. Uh, the first one that we should probably talk about, this happened So this happened last weekend, actually, like, basically right after we finished recording. But the voice actress for Bayonetta and the Bayonetta series took to Twitter and was like, you guys should boycott Bayonetta 3 because they they basically lowballed me on uh, the how much they were, wanted to pay me to reprise the role in Bayonetta 3. And she claimed that they had only offered her 4000 to play the lead character. And that was it. She was like, that was insultingly low. And so... She was very mad about it, told everybody to boycott the game, and so she didn't do it, uh, didn't take the role, and instead uh, Jennifer Hale from, uh, mostly known for Mass Effect, she played uh, Fem Shep, and uh, everybody got very angry at first because they just jumped the gun on like, oh, this is what so-and-so said, didn't listen to the other side of the story, and so it became a big topic of discussion, and then later... Uh, Platinum Games came out and was like, well, that's not true. We actually have documentation. They told uh, Bloomberg that they have documentation showing that they offered her um, five recording sessions that would last about four hours apiece. And she would be paid three to four thousand for each of those individual recording sessions for a total of roughly, you know, 15,000 or something like that. Mm hmm. And so, I mean, if you you calculate that down to, like, the hourly pay, that's not bad at all. Um, but it did, like, kick off this uh, discussion about, like, um, how much voice actors get paid and are they not being paid enough? Should they be paid more? Um, but, yeah, it's basically a he said, she said at this point, And it's uh, kind of been a roller coaster of a story uh, throughout the week. Voice and actors, I feel like, are in an unfortunate position similar to, like, animators where the industry is just, like, yeah, there's not really, like, a standard for what we should pay you. So, like, yeah. uh, you should just do it for this amount. Yeah, and, and uh, I always wonder how much voice actors get paid. Um, and I guess this is maybe bringing that to light, but... You've got to imagine it's... Not as much as it they could be being paid if we lived in like a, a better society. Yeah. And if maybe the industry was a little bit more like the way Hollywood operates, I would yeah. imagine people who are either on camera in like a big TV show or movie or like their um, like screen actors guilds and all of that to like sort of enforce uh, industry standards. I don't know if there is. The same That's a good question. I don't know if there is a, a voice actors union. If I feel like there should be. Yeah, there probably should be. And maybe there will out of this. But um, I have to say, I still am very excited for Bayonetta 3. And I don't know if I can boycott it for this. Well, reason. I was going to say, like, I've, like, Jason Schreier was kind of leading some of the reporting on this for Bloomberg. And, like, they supposedly had like documentation to show that her story is not true. So I don't know. I don't know what to believe about it, but um, also I will always fall on the side of not the corporation. Well, I get that, but also like, I, I don't really know what, how it would benefit her to lie about it. <laughs> so, so I kind of also part of me wants to side with her on it, but also like, did they lowball Jennifer Hale to play this part? Because I—that's a good I feel question. Like I, she Hale, said, I mean, I'm sure she signed a a bunch of NDAs. 
I feel like Jennifer Hale is a much bigger name in the video game voice actor community than, um, what is her name? Helena Taylor. I, I feel a, like they wouldn't have gotten away with paying her as low amount of money and they probably wouldn't have paid her, offered her as low amount of money as Jennifer or Helena Taylor claims. Um, she was tweeting about it. She did say she was under NDA or in what is it? NDA. So she can't mm-hmm. really say anything, but she did also like without saying it, she sort of retweeted somebody that was like, uh, went on this long thread about not just taking one side of the story and waiting for things to play out. And which basically indicates that maybe what Taylor said is not necessarily true. And that, she sort of is siding with platinum on this one. So I, I don't a, know. I feel like a more... slight tangent to go on. Okay. Have you heard of MDAs? Uh, no, I've posted a link in our show notes. Somehow I've done it as a suggestion. I don't I may have accidentally done that, but uh <laughs> pizza hut has come out with uh, new melts, which are basically just two of their thin crust pizzas on top of each other. It seems like maybe in like a papadilla esque way. But if you scroll down in this article, it says that Pizza Hut wants to encourage customers to go solo and promise to not share their melts by signing MDAs, melt disclosure agreements, <laughs> to now share images of the new melt for a chance to win $100. Encourage customers. Would you customers? sign an MDA? Why would... I don't understand this. I also don't understand it. <laughs> so they're specifically asking people to order this thing but not share pictures of it well now well, it says to not share their melts and then it says to sign an mda to now share images but maybe that's a misspelling in this article and it says I, to not share i, I don't think, know why they wouldn't want you to share it i think by not sharing they mean eat it yourself and don't let anyone else have any oh but they don't mean social media okay yeah that's it needlessly was confusing <laughs> yeah i was gonna say they could have worded this a lot better and gotten rid of that confusion but uh Anyway, MDAs are a thing in our world now. <laughs> Those exist, yeah. Tell me about this uh, dual shock, this uh, dual sense, I should say, edge controller. Yeah, so Sony like released info about the dual sense edge controller, which is basically just like a very expensive pro controller uh, that you know Microsoft has had theirs for a long time, and everybody mm-hmm. seems to like it. Um, And Sony has finally done one for the PlayStation 5 and like you can swap out like the thumbsticks and it's got like the um, paddles on the back, I think. Um, And yeah, it's like two hundred dollars. I was listening to I was listening to another podcast about PlayStation and one of the hosts was like. I'm going to totally pre-order two of these. And one of the other hosts was like, really? Like (laughs) for that amount of money, you could buy a PlayStation five console and get like a a controller for free (laughs) with, you know, in the box. Yeah. This is a crazy, that seems like too much. How much is the Xbox elite controller? I, I don't think it's 200. I'm not sure off the top of my head, but I don't believe it's $200. Wow. I don't personally I don't think a controller should cost more than a hundred dollars. I agree. Um so I will not be bu- buying one of these, but um it looks cool. I'll give them that. It it does seem cool, but that's a lot of money for I agree. a controller. So too much, I would say. Hard get pass. a VR headset instead. Yeah, that's true. You could get the the PlayStation uh what do they call it? I think it's called PSVR 2? Yeah, it's PSVR 2. I thought maybe they had a fancy name for it, but no, they kept it simple. I would be interested to know like their internal name for it. I'm sure it was something cool. Like yeah, what Aquarius was the project or name for it? <laughs> and why didn't that stick the way it does with some things? But <laughs> uh, Anyway, I just want to throw this out here. Ease 10 was apparently planned to release this year uh, to go along with the series 35th anniversary. But uh, I guess it did not. Now, uh, Ease 8, which is one of the more popular games in the series, is coming to PlayStation 5 later this year. Mm. Um, And I may pick it up because I I played Ease 9 on Stadia. That's, uh, 
you know, it's been an ongoing discussion where mm-hmm. Stadia is going to shut down. That's one of the games I'm sort of in the middle of and have kind of picked up uh, in little bits and pieces here and there and would kind of like to finish it. Um, and I don't believe they are one of the game companies that's sort of working to help like transfer your save file. So it may be one of those things where I need to like really make a push to finish it before <laughs> uh, Stadia shuts down or I'm looking at having to like pick it up elsewhere and start over start again. scratch. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, I like the series. I enjoyed uh, Ease 9, uh, what I did play of it. And I do think Ease 8 looks pretty good. So I'm curious to see what a, a new Ease game would be like, especially since um, I think it would be the first one like specifically made during the like new gen consoles. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think that would be cool. And uh, yeah, I just want to throw it out there. Let's talk about Overwatch. Yeah, so Overwatch, currently as we are recording this, it's a double XP weekend. So have you dived I in should yet? jump in, but I have not because <laughs> a bunch of games came out and I've been yeah. playing other things. But they did also announce that uh, Halloween Terror, their uh, Halloween event, is going to start up next week. Uh, again, as we're recording this, it'll be this week as the podcast goes up. Um, Seems a little late. I feel like they normally it would have started already. Um, but yeah, they they had confirmed that this was going to happen. So it seems like maybe Junkenstein's Revenge is going to come back. But I think they mm. also have some other stuff planned as well. Uh, mm. I am looking forward to it. It might be the thing that gets me to jump back in to Overwatch. I'm so curious to hear about when you do jump in just to hear your experiences. Yeah, I mean, from what I hear, it's basically, it just feels like Overwatch 1, but with, like, you know, a couple new characters and a new game mode. And the new game mode does seem cool. I forget what it's called, but basically there's, like, a robot pushing this big thing. It might even just be called Push, but (laughs) um, you have to sort of be around it, which, I mean, I... Again, I haven't played it, so I don't know for sure. But that seems pretty similar to the other game modes that are. are yeah, there Overwatch. was already like a hovering cart that you had to. Well, get now from there's point a, a robot pushing a hovering cart. How do you feel yeah, about I that? I guess that is enough of a twist. <laughs> it's so different. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I always enjoyed the Halloween events. I, I am looking forward to this, and I will probably jump in, and it'll be my first experience with overwatch too so maybe on next week's podcast we will have some overwatch impressions but very curious to hear uh this was an interesting thing that came out GameSpot, i believe has an article about how developers have been asking microsoft to sort of drop the requirement to develop uh their games to run on the series s uh what do you think of oh. that isn't that I'm crazy? I'm anti it. <laughs> yeah, that isn't seems that crazy? bad. So basically, they're saying, uh, like, we could be making games that look and run even better if we could just make them for the Series X, which is the more powerful model. Yeah, we're only a few years into this, and they're already saying this Series S, this cheaper, you know, less powerful model that you've made is holding us back and we want you to drop the requirements that wow. our game can run on that who were the developers it wasn't uh bethesda was it uh that's a good question because that would be not great i don't believe so why were you planning on picking up a, a series s to... no i'll probably get it on pc now that i've built my new computer but yeah. uh I mean, it was always enticing to get one of those things. It's just like a Game Pass box, but yeah, it especially like since, maybe that's a bad idea. Especially since they're available, like yeah, and the Series X, I to my knowledge, is still maybe a little harder to get. And I believe it is. Yeah, of course, more expensive, but yeah, I feel like a lot of people probably picked up the Series S just to have as like a Game Pass box, um, yeah. somewhere in their house, but. Yeah, I don't know. I thought that was pretty interesting. I don't know if they're going to do it. 
But like GameSpot's like title for this article is Studios Asking Xbox to Drop Xbox Series S Requirement. Devs say system has become albatross. So I uh, hate their naming scheme. Like yeah, I don't their know, naming I don't scheme like that is awful. <laughs> different series is like the, the 360 was good. They should have called the Xbox One the Xbox 720 or something else, but one still is confusing to everybody. And now there's like, are they called Xbox One Series something or is it just Xbox Series? It's just Series. Yeah, so they they had the original Xbox, which you I guess you have to say OG Xbox or like original yeah. Xbox. And then they had the 360 and then they went back to Xbox One, which was really confusing. A bad one. Um, and then they made a more powerful version of that called the Xbox One X. And yes. now they've got the Series S and the Series X. <laughs> so confusing. It's overly confu- confusing. Whoever it's, is in their marketing department is not doing a good job. Yeah, it's terrible. So, yeah. But anyway, I thought that was interesting. I don't know if anything will come of that. Maybe in a you know, few years' time they will drop this. But I know like the note on the Series S was always like, just be aware. like It is cheaper. It is more readily available. <laughs> but you're not really future proofed if you pick this one yeah. up. Um so <laughs> I don't know, maybe next year they will they will drop it. But I also feel like they're they're probably working on like slim models of the new consoles at some point. They've got to be cuz that uh That's although a thing I will that say happens. I do like the Series X or no, S? No, X, the, the, uh, yeah. the powerful one. Yeah, yeah. The one that is like a big uh, looks like a server, cube, not a cube, but like it looks like a server. Yeah, that is actually a cool design that I am into. It is. I almost wish the PS5 looked like that instead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The but, PS5 I can't really get behind uh, as far as its looks. Uh, I wish it, it did is, not look like that. It is a giant thing too. Like I, I don't have. It just is sitting on my floor, and <laughs> it's just kind of there. It's huge, but. uh but yeah, I really like the the console, like uh, playing PS5 games, uh, and that that controller is awesome for PlayStation. But the design of their console is just not good looking. Uh, so do you want to talk about any of this yeah. like, Silent Hill stuff and like the Resident Evil showcase? Do you like Evil spooky showcase? games, Zach? Uh, it is spooky game season, and I'm not a big fan of horror stuff to be nor am i but there was this weird silent hill thing konami famously is a bad company that uh ousted kojima and didn't (laughs) let him finish the last metal gear solid game and mainly they make pachinko games now um but they i guess are all in on silent hill now there was going to be that cool kojima silent hill game uh that pt was the precursor to but that is not happening obviously oh speaking of kojima did you see i saw a tweet today that he met with the director of that movie rrr and captured his body in his like celebrity capture machine (laughs) and so the director of rrr is maybe going to be in kojima's next game that's interesting yeah i saw people recommending that movie on twitter like it's good i liked it it's on netflix i recommend it yeah, um, I added it to my wish list, but I haven't watched it yet. So, uh, Silent Hill, they're all in on it. They have announced a ton of stuff for it. I'm probably not going to play any of them. But uh, there is a remake of Silent Hill 2 that people are very excited about. There is a new game called Silent Hill Townfall, which we don't have a lot of information on. There's a new movie that I think is based on Silent Hill 2. And there's another mo- game called Silent Hill F, which we don't really know anything about. Uh, probably the most interesting thing, or I, I would say the funniest thing from this, uh, Silent Hill showcase was when they were talking about the movie, uh, JJ Abrams is involved, (laughs) but, uh, so they were like, now the lady was like, now let's hear from JJ Abrams screen transition to just a wall of text because he was not in this presentation. It was just a quote from him. <laughs> so they were, they just threw up a quote where he was like, Silent Hill two is great or whatever. And they cut back and they're like, wow, JJ Abrams, everybody. <laughs> How great. <laughs> um, yeah. Did he just, did it just say Silent Hill now with more mystery boxes? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? I, I predict this movie will probably be not good or maybe even won't even happen. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> 
just a lot of silent hill news we probably will not play any of these but there um, was an era when jj abrams was supposed to be the new spielberg and now i feel like everybody hates jj abrams (laughs) it's unfortunately true i will say that first star trek he made was very good and i like a lot Um, i mean it's entertaining for sure it's just i don't i feel like it's not what like the hardcore star trek people wanted yeah so then they also had a resident evil showcase which is slightly more interesting uh resident evil village is getting an upgrade so third person mode for your guy and also there's some sort of extra there's a dlc for a character named rose where she's doing stuff and then also there is a new mode where you get to play as the lords so you could like get to play as lady dimitrescu and like the other lords I'm very impressed that you were able to say that name. I think that's how you say it. Well, it sounded good to me. So I It's don't not know. because I have Googled her a bunch. I don't believe you. <laughs> um, but uh, you played Resident Evil Village, didn't you? I played part of it. I didn't finish it, but yeah. In the showcase, the guy was like, yeah, we thought third person mode might bring more people in because it's less intense like because it's third person some people think it's maybe less scary because it's not happening to you it's happening to the character yeah so i can see he that. thought that it, it would uh help people to help other people who who avoided it maybe uh enjoy it a little more yeah i can see that maybe being the case for some people uh, just like there's just a little bit of a, a level of disconnection so it yeah. doesn't feel as horrifying but um, I thought it was cool, but I, again, I'm not a huge horror game fan. So yeah, this was I agree. when I played it, I played it on Stadia actually, but I, I, this was like, a you should expand your horizons and try something new, especially mm-hmm. like for this long running, like beloved franchise. And I was like, I get this. I don't necessarily need more of it. <laughs> yeah. I felt the same way. I, I watched someone play it. Like for like the first maybe hour or two hours, and at that point I was like, I get this, I understand what's going on, and I'm impressed by it. But it's also not something I need yeah. to see. Do you want to get a little bit into early impressions of God of War? Yes. Yeah, so I've not, I've not uh, watched a lot of these. I watched like the first ten minutes. Midmax put up like a thirty minute thing about because uh, two of them got to play early access on it. Like the first five hours they could talk about. But I have not really dove in, uh, dove in deeply because I want to come in pretty fresh. But everything yeah. I'm seeing across the board is very positive. The first I've heard from multiple sources that the first like hour and a half are just like nonstop, wonderful opening, like crazy beats. Um, the one thing I've heard that's maybe some people have given it a, spl- a slight criticism, but I think it's not a criticism is that if you liked the combat in God of War 2018, it's very um, similar but less slightly deeper in this one, which I loved the combat in the first yeah. one, so that's not a criticism, criticism to me. Uh, have you watched any of these like previews or whatever? I have not. I know they're out there. I've kind of avoided them a little bit. Yeah, um, me too. But I, it's good to know that it's like getting a positive reception, so... I need to watch. So here's some, the other thing that's important is when uh, upcoming to this, I was like, man, I need to watch like a YouTube recap of yeah. uh, God of War because it has been a while. And also I was in a sort of a unique situation because we played the first part of it together mm-hmm. and then I just didn't play it for like a year. And then I was like, oh, I should I should guess I should play this again. And I, I don't have a ton of memories from the first part. Well, I guess I could go back and watch our videos, which yeah, I was going to say, do. we do have those up on the channel. We can always rewatch them. But but uh because of that, I was happy to hear that there is a little uh, like precursor recap you can watch if you you can select to enable it when you play God of War Ragnarok that mm. kind of like goes over the events of the first one. So I probably will enable that even though I have played the first one just as a refresher. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Well, and I'm sure they want to like have people who didn't play the first one still be able to come play this one as oh, well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it is, yeah, it's a duology, so this is it for um, them in this particular setting. I don't know. It, have I they announced that? Yeah, I don't know that it's specifically the end of this, like, iteration of the characters, but, like, for sure they're going to be done with, like, the Norse mythology 
um, at the end of this game. So I'm into that. I my favorite part in the second, not my favorite part, but something I think about a lot in the first game is that part where you go at the very end and you're looking at all those murals and there was like an Egyptian thing. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, I would love for them to go to Egypt and like start doing that Pantheon. That would be crazy to see. Yeah. And Um, that could be what they do next, which would be very awesome. That sounds great to me. I'm, I'm so curious how this game will end because I feel like they're really good at doing that prestige and having a little, I mean, they had a couple of really cool reveals at the end of the first one. So I would assume Mm -hmm. it's going to be the same with this one. Yeah. And it's just like such a high level of like production value and quality. Oh, yeah. Like I've watched that last trailer that they put out like 20 times. Like it's I, so good. It's so good. It's so exciting. And it really gets me hyped to like get back into that world and play uh, the second game. But uh, let's talk about something that is not as positive. Um have you watched any of this Gotham Knights game? Yeah. So, I, is it out now? It is out. Yes. It's people. I think initially were excited about it years ago when we saw the first couple trailers because you know the Arkham games are beloved, mm-hmm. and this is basically what if Arkham, what if the Arkham games transitioned into more of like a Destiny style game as a service type thing? Is it a game uh, of service? I mean, that's what it looked like to me. It looked like an Avengers style, like, hey, play these characters, upgrade them with a bunch of, like, currencies, and, like, there's going to be, you know, monthly events happening. Oh. I don't think... I didn't think it was a game of service. I thought it was more of just, like, a big, like, sort of open world RPG with uh, characters in that universe other than Batman, because I believe... Maybe that is the case, but, like, if you look at the inventory screen in one of these games, I looked at... I was watching a review... uh, it looks like a game, a mobile game with like microtransactions because there's Dude. so many currencies and like so many like things that you're slowly ticking up. Mm. Well, that's not good. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not good. It's uh, <laughs> people are not super hot on this game. Uh, yeah, I looked at some of the reviews and it, it seems to be getting like seven or less. Yeah. From depending on where you look and um, a lot of people you have like sort of two sides that are responding to this and they're either like how dare you rate this so low or they they are like man this is awful like a seven is too high for this so like Mm -hmm. i don't know i don't know what to make of it it does not seem like something i would want to play anyway but i think that if you are all about batman which some people are some people walk around wearing like you know a bunch of dc paraphernalia on they have like mm-hmm. dc hats and things like that they're obsessed with batman and the lore i think if you're into that you're gonna love this i i believe that if you're a regular person they're even if you even if you're a regular person who liked the arkham games which i did i loved arkham asylum and arkham city was that the second one yes I'm I'm into those, uh, but the these I don't know. Uh, apparently, the combat is not as great, which was one of the things I liked the most about the Arkham games. Um, and also, there's just like I don't know. I think it went way too heavy into the RPG side mm. uh, for a lot. Well, of and people. I've also seen like some of the reviews on Steam were like this game on like even a you know high end PC is running at like 30 frames a second. Oh really? And, like or or maybe it's. <laughs> like consoles is maybe limited to 30 frames a second or something like that. Like mm. people are not super happy with like the performance of the game. It as got well. a bunch of delays, didn't it? Cause I feel like I saw the first trailer for this like a long time ago. Yeah. I think it did get delayed numerous times, but I, and I think there was like a high level an- of anticipation for this game, not just because like people obviously love like DC love superheroes, Batman. but also, um yeah those batman games people loved and so they were like give me more of that and so i think there are a lot of people who are like were hotly anticipating this game such that they thought it might even be their game of the year and Mm. to have it come out and be not necessarily everything people were hoping it would be is maybe causing some of that like sort of really mixed reaction but yeah i don't know I would like to talk about a game that is getting positive reviews 
Zach, have you started playing Mario Rabbids? Sparks I have. Yeah. I'm like r- really enjoying it. I'm like into the snowy world, which is either mm-hmm. like the second or third area. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's cool. It's like it it is sort of that XCOM style like strategy mm-hmm. uh, thing, which I am sort of hit or miss on uh, as to whether I can get into those or not. But I'm really enjoying this one. Uh, it is weird to see like Mario with like guns and Luigi with like a bow and arrow, but um, I don't know why they oh, don't Luigi just... has a bow and arrow. Yeah. He's like a ranged guy. I don't know why they don't just like throw fireballs, but well, Luigi had a vacuum in the last one. I thought he had a rifle. It looked to me like a vacuum. Maybe it, it was meant to be like a rifle. Cause he was like a sharpshooter. But uh, to me, it always looked like a vacuum. He should have a vacuum. Like they should really key into like the um, Luigi's mansion and just like, make that his character (laughs) like somehow work that into his kit but no the it's cool there's uh like a good variety of characters to start out with i think like you start out with only having two characters in your party and then it expands to three i don't know if it expands any further it probably does but um you also start with so you have these like you know those like shine characters basically from like yeah previous game um like mario games they're sort of like rabid versions of those in this mm-hmm. game. And they basically give you like some sort of power up and you're, so you're like, as you go, you're, Oh, there's sparks because of the name. Yeah. Sparks of hope. <laughs> it's in the name, <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah. So you're, you're getting these sparks and the, you can equip one of them to start and eventually you can equip two of them. And like some of them are like the fire one that like you can when you activate it, it makes your your weapons do fire damage. And so like some enemies will be weak to that and you can swap them out, too. So like uh, I swapped uh, Luigi to have like the fire one in one of the recent battles I did because there were enemies like that. um were weak to fire and there were others that were like weak to like splash damage. And so I had a rabid peach with the, uh, the splash damage one. And she just like fires off like a couple of rockets and up into the air. And so her attacks are like single target damage, but like you can sort of fire over cover a little bit with her. Um, and so, yeah, I just been swapping out the different characters and trying different team compositions and, trying out the different abilities and they all seem pretty cool i think maybe you can get bowser on your team that is true i've seen that yeah Uh, i'm not far enough along yet but that's very cool to me (laughs) i'm very excited so did you play the first one i don't remember i did not i loved the first one and uh i played with my girlfriend and so i i got my copy late last night and i have not started it yet but i'm very excited to all i've heard is that it's a a refinement of the form Mm -hmm. and uh there's just a bunch of uh great stuff about this one that improves on the last one yeah it's cool that you can like sort of freely move around and you can sort of use that to your advantage because you can sort of position your Uh, characters in such a way that you can do like a team throw basically where you like move one character to sort of the edge of their like movement radius and then you move another character over there and they would um, be at the end of their movement radius as well but you since you positioned another character over there you can like go walk up to them and it'll give you like a button prompt to like throw that character into the air and then he has like a little sort of like a helicopter type of the thing where you can sort of move even further and sort of expand your movement radius by moving um, in that way. And so you can sort of really, uh, you have a lot of flexibility in terms of like Mm -hmm. where you want to move your characters. And uh, you also have a lot of flexibility in terms of like what you can do when it's your character's turn. Cause you have sort of two actions that you can complete, but also like if you're close to an enemy, you can do this like dashing attack that doesn't cost like one of your action points, I guess. Mm-hmm. So you can do a little bit of damage that way. And then you can like go take cover somewhere and then like use your attack or something or use one of your sparks. 
Um, and then each character also has like a special ability of some sort. And like I've had battles where I had both Mario and Luigi and they both sort of have this like overwatch um, move as like their special thing where they basically yeah, they have that in the last game. Yeah, they activate like their radius or whatever. Um, and so if somebody moves within that radius, they shoot them. So that's pretty cool as well. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I wish I were playing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Soon enough. Soon enough. Uh, other games released this week. Did you pick up that Persona 5 Royale? I have not yet. I'm holding off on that one. I do intend to play it at some point, but I kind of want to get through Mario and Rabbids uh, in time for God of War to come out. Yeah, it's a rough time for us. There's so many games out right now. Um, but yeah, it's very cool that this is now coming to other platforms. And I am again debating, do I want to pick it up on Steam so I can play it on my Steam Deck? Or do I want to pick it up on Switch so I can have like a physical copy of it, but also like you still have that portability? Um, do you think you'll pick this one up? We're going to do Mario Rabbids first, and then I think I... I don't know. It's such a rough time, because after Mario Rabbids, I, it's going to be time for God of War. Yeah. So will you pick that up on PS4 then? Yeah, I will. Yeah, I think so. I was so, going to yeah. say, it is com- it's not coming to PC, right? It is just PS4, PS5. It probably is eventually, but it's going to be like a year or two years. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Sony doesn't <laughs> drop their stuff day and date on PCs. <laughs> But I will get it on PS4, and I will report back, I guess. Actually, I might. I'm probably not going to pre-order it. I probably will wait, like, two days to see if the PS4 version has a lot of issues. Oh, yeah. Uh, if it's hopefully, a, it does not. And if it does, it's, then... It's, yeah, not a... Maybe I'll be buying a PS5. I don't know. Not a cyberpunk situation. Yeah. And then also out this week is A Plague Tale Requiem. That is out on Game Pass. So I've really sort of waffled on whether I want to download that and at least like try a little bit of it since i played the last game earlier this year and i liked it um so very cool that this is out and available if you have game pass um i've heard nothing but good things about it so uh if you like the first game and you have game pass you might as well play this one as well Mm -hmm. Um, don't have any impressions on it because I haven't really watched reviews or anything about it. I do plan on jumping in eventually, but I, I don't know if that'll be even before the year is over because of so how many other things are out right now. But do you want to get into other things we've been playing and watching? Yes. So uh, I picked up Cyberpunk again because of the looming ending of Stadia, even though they have said there is a way to uh, export your save. And you will get you will get the money back. So we're there. People true. are jokingly referring to it as uh, the Stadia stimulus checks because <laughs> you're going to get like whatever games you bought and hardware you bought um, through the Google Store. You're just going to get like all of that back. So, so I I'm not interested in doing any of the uh, racing missions or any of the boxing missions. But other than that, I've done everything. Mm. Uh, and I just got to the part where you walk up and it gives you the full screen message. This is the point of no return. Oh yeah. And then I backed off of that. So I'm going to double check that I have nothing else to do as I think I've completed everything. And then I'm going to, Oh, and I haven't done any of those, like find the posters. Cause I also don't care about that. Um, but I think within the week I will have completed I mean, I guess I don't know how far, how long, how much longer it is post the point of no return, but I will probably complete uh, Cyberpunk this week or next week. Mm, so you'll have like end game impressions for next week's podcast. I shall, hopefully. Awesome. Uh, so I did finally finish Ghostwire Tokyo uh, this last week, and I really like that game. I think it is underrated. Like you you sort of asked me how the writing was and I waffled a little bit on it last Mm. week uh, because I was only like partway through and I was kind of waiting to see if they were going to actually do some character development (laughs) Um, because I felt it was a little bit lackluster in that regard uh, in the first few chapters. And also like weird thing about how it starts out is like it's like an animation or a cutscene where like... uh, KK, who's one of the main characters, is like sort of a spirit where I guess his body is already gone. 
Mm-hmm. And he like goes and sort of possesses the player character who's Akito. And they sort of establish it as this like symbiotic relationship where Akito is basically dead, but he's been reanimated because uh, KK has sort of uh, taken over his body a little bit. Mm-hmm. And that's how you have those powers. But they, I, I don't remember if they explain how KK has those powers and how you're <laughs> able to use them. Well, he's um, a yokai, isn't he? I don't think so. I think he's just a human guy that like they he and like a team were like doing research on like um, how to stop this guy because they sort of knew that this was coming. And um, but yeah, a weird thing is later on in the game, the whole like symbiotic relationship thing just becomes not a thing at all. Like, what do you mean? In one chapter, you get separated and he has to like go track down KK and reunite with him, basically. So it's like, I guess it's not a thing. So I don't know. I, <laughs> I waffled a little bit on the writing because of stuff like that. But yeah, I do think later in the game, it kind of comes together. Um, there's even like one of the later chapters. It almost becomes like walking simulator as you're sort of like going through these memories um, and it d- goes a long way towards sort of establishing the characters and their relationships and things like that. Um, and it's it's a very surreal game at, at certain points um, in a very like creative uh, artistic way that I think is cool. And yeah, I just I really enjoyed exploring the world. And like it's been a while since I've like really gotten into like, a, you know, an open world RPG like collect a thon style game. Yeah. And so it was great to just like, you know, almost shut my brain off and just like put on a <laughs> podcast or like a TV show in the background and just like run around exploring the world and like, you know, using the grapple mechanic to get to the rooftops and then just like um, using the glide mechanic to to go around from rooftop to rooftop collecting stuff. So I really enjoyed it for that. I also think it's like, like people were saying that it's like, you know, not like a big triple a game or whatever but i thought the i thought it looked good i thought the animations were really well done and it felt like really polished to play Mm -hmm. um so yeah i liked it visually as well um so yeah and i i I ended up liking the characters quite a bit by the end as well so i think they did a pretty good job uh story-wise bringing it together at the end and it is basically like the main character and the the villain are basically like two sides of the same coin where they're sort of dealing both dealing with loss, but they both sort of handle it in very different ways, obviously. Um, How many hours was it? So it's a, it's a pretty short game. If you just sort of mainline the main story, I think it's roughly like 11, 12 hours. Oh, that's very doable. Um, so yeah, it's pretty doable, especially if you don't really care about collecting everything and you just sort of go for the main story. Um, but yeah, I liked being in the world and exploring like rain soaked nighttime Tokyo. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so I ended up platinuming it. I actually got all, all the trophies, my very first platinum on PlayStation. Whoa. There was a time back in the 360 era where I was, I really enjoyed going for the achievements. Um, and then I just kind of stopped caring about it and, <laughs> uh, switched over to PlayStation and had never actually gone for a platinum and, in uh, any of the games on I played on uh, PlayStation, but this one's very doable if you're into that sort of thing. Hmm. But yeah, uh, and then the only other thing I have played other than Mario and Rabbids and Ghostwire Tokyo this last week was I started uh, the OG Luigi's Mansion. Whoa, how are the, you playing that? I'm playing it on 3DS. There was actually a, a port slash remaster on 3ds that came out weirdly in like 2018 <laughs> so like I didn't know you had a 3ds yeah well i have one of those like it's the clamshell like 2ds ones oh yeah so yeah. it's not the actual 3ds but yeah it came out weirdly in 2018 like a year before luigi's mansion 3 so like That's the switch was already out and like the yeah. new game was coming out the very next year uh i kind of wonder why it didn't just why did it, they didn't just port it to switch that is a weird, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, I wonder so, if it would have been hard because it is the dual screen type thing. 
Well, yeah, but I mean, the original Luigi's Mansion was just a GameCube game. It wasn't like dual screen. That's true. That's so weird. How is it? I mean, I I have issues with like the sort of depth perception for some reason yeah. um, where it seems like I am aiming at something that's like next to me, but I guess they're like a little bit further back in the room or further forward towards the screen. So I've struggled with that a little bit, but otherwise I've enjoyed it. I mean, it's like a, a simpler version of Luigi's Mansion 3 where uh, you're still like going from room to room, like sucking up ghosts and all of that. And there are sort of these like little boss type characters, but it feels like room to room, you're sort of running into more of them like faster. Whereas Luigi's Mm. Mansion three is a little bit bigger and more expansive, way more ambitious. And (laughs) there's just a lot more to it. Um, Also the original Luigi's Mansion is supposed to be a pretty short game, like roughly like six to eight hours, I think. Oh, so I don't know if I will finish it because of all the other stuff that just came out, but I was like, I have this. I might as well play it. And it's like appropriately themed for October. So it's true. We're getting to we're in we're deep into the spooky season. We are. It's a perfect time to play Luigi's Mansion. And I was thinking about it recently because I love Luigi's Mansion 3 so much and I played it. I think it came out on Halloween on like 2019. I think you're right. Yeah. And so I start, I jumped in on Halloween. So every time this time of year, I'm like, it's Luigi's mansion time. I should actually <laughs> go back and play those first two games. Cause I never did, but I feel like it was a big oversight that they never got. There was not like a variant of Luigi from Luigi's mansion in, uh, smash that had like vacuum powers yeah I, I almost think if you're gonna have luigi in your game and it's gonna be like a mario and rabbits or like a smash or uh even like a mario kart like he should have even if it's just like a visual thing he should have the vacuum on his back and in and gooigi yeah and he should have some sort of luigi's mansion themed like attacks you know but a missed opportunity for sure even if he's just like he is able to like use the ghost that he's sucked up to like deal damage somehow but yeah a ton of fun things you could do with smash like so, we could so bring a ton things. of great stuff yeah but i don't know i think it's cool that um it's available on 3ds but i do wish that it would have just been a switch release yeah and I agree. I would I would have checked it out if it was on Switch for sure. Yeah, I feel like it should be on Nintendo Online, but you kind of I don't know how they do like 3DS ports to Switch yeah, because know. of the dual screen, but obviously this is also a GameCube game, so maybe like once uh Nintendo expands the online offerings to also include GameCube games, maybe we'll get that, but would be great. Oh, yeah. so the only other thing I'm kind of watching uh, slash playing, mainly watching. Um, I got all excited for that uh, Breath of the Wild Tears of the Kingdom. And I I didn't want to start a new save in Breath of the Wild, but I did want to like experience it again. Mm-hmm. And so I started watching some guys play through of, like that. He like he got it like the day of like we did. Um, it's one of my favorite streamers. And, uh, so now I'm just watching his first hours of playing Breath of the Wild. He did like, he loves Zelda. So he did like a five hour stream the first day. And then the second day was kind of split up, but it's like basically a seven hour YouTube video. (laughs) So I've been watching those and remembering how great it was to play Breath of the Wild for the first time. Man, Uh, I still remember, I still remember that. Like, cause you and I went to Best Buy for we went and saw Wolver- or no, we saw Logan. Logan, yeah. And then we went over to Best Buy. It was very cold. We it was waited very in line. cold in early March that year, 2017. March and 3rd. We picked it up and then we went and played it for into the wee hours of the morning. Well, I yeah, because I worked overnights at that time. Mm-hmm. And I these were like, I think it was my weekend uh at the time. And so I was like I'm up later than I should be for when I have to work. So I'm going to like do a weird reset thing where I just like stay up all night. 
Yeah. And so I went and we, we got our copies of, uh, Zelda and our switches. And I went home and I like brewed up a pot of coffee and I played it all night. And it was so I, good. What a, it was a great weekend. I remember we, we did that. I went back. My girlfriend came into town. We played it late into the night, woke up. I went to Capriati's the next day and got a great sandwich and nice. went back and played some more. So good. A fond memory, I would say. Very excited for more information about uh, Tears of the Kingdom. And I wonder if we'll get more at the Game Awards. That's right around the corner. It's true. Yeah. We might get like another trailer or maybe they do their... You think maybe we'll get like a an actual deep dive uh, Nintendo Direct for it uh, before the year's over or not till next year? Hmm. I think it's going to be next year before we get a deep dive. But who knows? You never know with Nintendo. I think hopefully we will get another piece of the puzzle at the Game Awards. I don't think we're going to get a long video. Yeah. But uh, I was going to say, I, I can almost see them not having anything at Game Awards just because be. they already sort of said when it's coming out and like the They've next shown thing so little of it though like they they could just yeah. give us a little more they could give us another minute long video and i would be happy yeah i'm sure i mean they may do that but yeah I, I, we don't even know what's thing... going on with that arm like it seems like there's items in this game we don't know if weapons have durability like i uh, <laughs> did you watch that like hour and a half long game explain video about the last minute long trailer oh i still have not i should do that lots I... still lots of things to we need to discover so very excited for more of that on the horizon yeah the next thing we're really waiting on is that big deep dive that they're gonna do oh, yeah. soon it's gonna be great to see it will be uh do you want to hit us with some parting wisdom i think everybody should sign an mda Uh, A melt disclosure agreement. And uh, I don't know, check out that new Pizza Hut uh, Papadilla thing. It's interesting to me. I might go have it today. I don't know. If you do, you'll have to let us know on next week's show. I shall report back on the podcast. Um, I'm going to sign an MDA on whatever I have for lunch. (laughs) Because I'm getting hungry and it's about lunchtime as we're recording this. I think I'm going to go get some lunch as well. Well, on that note, why don't you go ahead and follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at Starside Cafe, and leave this podcast a review, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.